The ending of Mending the Line reinforces its main theme of confronting one's past and healing from suppressed trauma. Directed by Joshua Caldwell and written by Stephen Camillo, the war drama delves into the complex relationship between combat veterans and their traumatic experiences. At its core are two Marines deeply scarred by their time in combat. Mending the Line opens with John Calter, Sinqua Walls, leading his platoon through the final day of deployment in Afghanistan, which quickly turns into a harrowing ambush. Fast forward three months, and John finds himself undergoing rehabilitation back in Montana. While his physical wounds are healing, his psychological trauma simmers beneath the surface, and he yearns to return to combat. Enter Ike Fletcher, Brian Cox, a Vietnam veteran who finds solace solely in fly fishing, but is no longer able to venture to the stream alone due to his age. As John and Ike form an unlikely bond, Lucy, Perry Matfeld, a local librarian grappling with the loss of her fiancé, also joins their fishing outings. Friendship becomes vital for the central trio of Mending the Line characters as they struggle to cope with their respective demons. How Ike helps John see the light. John finally confronts his PTSD. Brian Cox as Ike Fletcher in Mending the Line. Throughout the film, John remains in denial about his PTSD. Things go south when a review deems him unfit to return to full duty status due to his poor mental health. This makes him descend deeper into an alcohol-soaked spiral, as his entire identity and sense of self are tied to being a Marine. Ike, meanwhile, attempts to make contact with his grandson, but learns that he's been dead to his son's family for years. The next morning, John goes to see Ike, but cannot find him at his residence and sees an empty bottle of whiskey in the sink. Turns out, Ike did not drink the alcohol but went fishing on his own and collapsed by the river. John lambasts Ike for being delusional and doing something he is physically incapable of doing, to which Ike points out that John is doing the same thing by insisting on returning to duty. While lying in the hospital bed, Ike tells John the most important line he needs to hear and shares how his experience of the Vietnam War damaged him and led him to feel like he didn't deserve love and therefore abandon his wife and son. In the book of every soldier's life, the military is a chapter. It never leaves you. But it's not, not the whole story. John and Lucy's closure explained. Lucy must leave to move on. This conversation prompts John to see Lucy and be honest with her, and himself, about his PTSD. Lucy also shares with John about how her fiancé took his own life, how she doesn't know how to move on from it, and how she needed John to show her how. She realizes that she can't stay there anymore and needs to physically leave the space and her ex-fiancé's mother to have any hopes of moving on. The two bid farewell on this sentimental note. While their prospective romance never materializes, they find closure through this conversation and enable each other to heal. Lucy reads one final excerpt to John, who is still unconscious, and then leaves. She calls her fiancé's mother and tells her that she won't be around for a while and cannot meet her anymore. Lucy emphasizes that she loves her and will stay in touch, and then drives off. This ending signals Lucy's need to move on from her traumatic past. Staying around her fiancé's mother and volunteering at the rehabilitation facility keeps her constantly grappling with her loss. Leaving is her choosing to finally let it go.